Good evening. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. In tonight's story, we start a new series, a series that was in fact inspired by one of your comments. As you know, I read them every day. One of you suggested stories where we take walks through ancient ruins throughout the planet. And so tonight we start this series with a nighttime tour of the Acropolis and the Parthenon in Athens, Greece. If you find the story helpful, please do hit the like button and please comment. I love to hear your stories and of course your suggestions for future stories. So as always, let's do a little relaxation session before tonight's story. I'm going to do a countdown from 10 to 1. And as I do, allow yourself to become more and more relaxed. 10. Noticing the support beneath you, your bed or the floor. Feeling that support, really feeling it. You are supported, you are safe. Nine. Just making sure that you're in the comfortable position that you like to fall asleep in. If you need to adjust, adjust. Eight. Just becoming aware of your breath for a moment to really Bring yourself to this moment. Noticing that breath as it enters and leaves your body. Seven. Letting go of the day now. Whatever has been, has been. Whatever will be, will be. This is your moment. Six. Remember, you deserve this peace. You deserve rest. Five. Noticing any residual tension in your body now. Are you holding in your hands? Or your feet, or your face, just let go now. Four, perhaps feel a little gratitude now for what you have, even the simple things, shelter, loved ones, the breath in your body. Three. 
Allow your imagination to be your friend. You are allowed to explore, to see all kinds of worlds, to luxuriate in the sound of my voice and allow it to be your friend that brings you to all sorts of wonderful places. Two. Really letting go now. Allowing your body to rest. It's worked hard for you today. Give it the peace that it deserves. One. Know that there is peace within you all of the time. You can access it whenever you need to. Now, allow me to take you to Athens. As the sun sets over Athens, you find yourself at the base of the Acropolis, preparing for a once-in-a-lifetime tour of the Parthenon. Your guide for the evening is Amelia, an archaeologist whose enthusiasm for ancient history is, well, contagious. She greets you warmly. Tonight, she says. We will be walking through millennia of history under the stars. You ascend the steps leading to the Parthenon, the cityscape of Athens spreading out below you like a blanket of twinkling lights. Amelia leads the way. Her flashlight illuminates the marbled pathway. The night air is crisp, laced with a scent of blooming jasmine from some nearby gardens. You hear the sound of crickets, and it feels so free here. You have nothing to do but to be curious and to enjoy this moment. Allow every step that you take to be a step back in time and allow the modern world to fade away just for tonight. As you approach the Parthenon, Amelia starts talking to you about the golden ratio, about how the temple's dimensions embody the divine proportion. 
she tells you that the ancient Greeks were artists, but they were also mathematicians. She invites you to touch one of the Doric columns. The marble is surprisingly warm, as if it has absorbed the essence of the sun that it has bathed in for millennia. Think of all the history that has occurred here. The many thousands and millions of people who have come across this powerful place. Humans, just like you and I, going through life, hundreds and thousands of years ago, thinking thoughts not that different from ours. Wanting things, shelter, leisure, now, standing under the open sky, framed by the temple's remains, Amalia points out the constellations that the ancient Greeks themselves named and used for navigation and storytelling. Can you see Orion, she says. The hunter was a favorite subject in ancient Greek myths. The stars seem brighter here. The celestial sphere and the Parthenon exist in harmony. A cosmic balance, perhaps, of the man-made and the divine. Then, Amalia takes you to the inner sanctum where the great statue of Athena once stood. You enjoy this moment. The solitude of just being with your guide. No crowds, just you being curious in a phenomenal place. As you look at where the statue once stood, Amalia paints a vivid picture with her words, detailing the grandeur of the once golden ivory statue.
This was not just a place of worship, she says, but a symbol of the Athenian unity and identity. Standing here, perhaps you can almost sense the devotion and awe that once filled this space. Perhaps for you, it's a humbling experience. An experience that connects you to the past and puts things in perspective in your own world. You continue your walk And Amelia begins to talk about the great philosophers who once walked the same ground that you're walking on now. Imagine Socrates, Plato, or Aristotle debating here, exchanging ground-breaking ideas under the same stars we're seeing, she says. The air seems to thicken with the weight of those words. Those words. Those thoughts. That have in so many ways. Shaped. Western philosophy. You take a moment to breathe here. To breathe in the energy of this place. Allowing it to enrich your soul. Allowing it to heal you. Allowing it to give you permission to just let go. Amelia continues. She tells you that Aristotle studied under Plato, and Plato was a student of Socrates. Each had different views, yet they are collectively the cornerstones of what we now call Western philosophy. Amelia has a soft spot for Socrates. She tells you that he was less concerned with cosmic questions and more interested in how people should live. 
his method of questioning, known as the Socratic method, is still taught in law schools today. Perhaps you imagine Socrates draped in his simple clothing, interrogating the Athenian youth about the nature of justice, ethics, and the good life. Imagine him standing on marble, surrounded by olive trees. His questioning spirit abounding. He never wrote anything down. Amelia tells you. So what we know of him comes from his students. Then she talks about Aristotle. She tells you that Aristotle believed that the key to understanding the world was through science. You look around. Imagining the young Aristotle walking this very path, observing the natural world and jotting down his thoughts. talks to you about the Stoic philosophers, how those philosophers believed that if we sit in acceptance of the world around us and the realities of life, that we can live in much more contentment. She tells you that the Stoics reminded humans to put themselves in the shoes of others To remember that we are all doing our best here on planet Earth, and that if we remember to be patient and kind, our own experience of life will be a much more fruitful existence. Feeling the depth of these reflections, perhaps you suddenly understand 
that the physical stones and pathways of this great place are but a surface layer the true essence of the Parthenon and Athens as a whole lies in its intellectual and spiritual contributions to humanity. As you step back to admire the full scope of the Parthenon under the moonlight, Amalia points out how it was designed with astonishing precision. It's hard to believe that it was constructed in just 15 years, completed in the year 432 BC. Amalia tells you that it is filled with optical illusions. The architects made the temple appear perfectly straight and symmetrical, though in reality, there's hardly a straight line to be found. Then she shows you the sculpted panels that once adorned the temple. Though many have suffered the wear of time, it's possible still to discern the artistry of the scenes they depict. Battles, myths, and all different parts of ancient Greece's rich cultural and religious life. As you walk along the periphery, your eyes catch the frieze that shows the Panthenaic procession, a big celebration for the Athenians. Each figure appears lifelike. Lives long gone, but not forgotten, immortalized in stone. Amalia tells you that the Parthenon 
wasn't just a temple to Athena, but it served as a treasury. The opulence and majesty of the structure were a testament to the city-state's power and accomplishments. Now your tour is coming to a close. And Amalia invites you to sit by a little fire that she lights to stay warm. The air is cooler now, and apart from the crackle of the little fire, There is a serene silence over the area. You sit there, letting your eyes drift from the towering columns to the night sky above. The stars twinkle, as if in a dance with the gods themselves, lighting up the Parthenon, as if Athena, the goddess of wisdom, is smiling down on you. Keeping you safe. You sit and enjoy this moment. Savoring the greatness around you. and the calming energy of this special place. <laughs>